everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I am doing another one of those interim projects because coming back from costume college I decided that what I really need is a new 19 teens corset. And I then went and I bought the Scroop pattern for, I think it's called like the Rilla corset, whatever their 19 teens one is. And then I realized, wait, uh, corsets need specialized materials like a busk and things like that, grommets, etc. Things I don't have. So while we wait for those to arrive, I am jumping in with another interim project, something with supplies that I could get locally, slash supplies that I could have already had. So I knew that I wanted to make a summer dress and I knew that I wanted one that I could also wear to the upcoming American Girl cosplay picnic that we are having on September 2nd here in Seattle. I will link all of the details down below in the description if you are interested in joining us. It is an open invitation. Please do feel free to come. We've had so much fun at the picnics that we've had so far. So anyway, that left me with kind of a couple of options. And so this morning I posted this little reel right here to my Instagram asking you all which one should I make? Should I make Mary Ellen's strawberry dress or should I make Molly's Route 66 dress, which is being worn by Nellie in this little clip. And I don't think I have ever experienced a more nearly unanimous poll in my life. Literally, I have had one vote for the Route 66 dress. All of the rest of you voted for the strawberry dress, which I guess is kind of good because two nights ago as I was going to sleep, I had in my brain, oh, I'm potentially going to do one of these two projects. When I woke up the next day, I completely forgot about the Route 66 as an option and went out and bought the fabric for the strawberry dress. So that's what we're making today. We are making a 1950s style strawberry dress play suit sort of thing. This is what we are doing. So this is one of those wrap dresses that the 1950s loved so much. And this one is very different from like the Butterick walkaway dress um, in a way that it's a lot better in my opinion. I hope that it works out to be a lot better, but it seems a lot better. Basically, we have one side here that wraps around like this. So it's like the dress almost seems complete on the other side. You can see where it ends there. And then this side wraps around and buttons in the front. But that first side that comes over here, the little tab actually goes through. If I can move her hair out of the way. It goes through the front. See like that? A little slit right there goes through and it buttons in the front there. So it becomes a more complete dress and what you also wind up with is like complete sides which the Butterick walkway dress doesn't have. A complete like full skirt which is really nice and also complete arm size which is really great. Especially because I'm actually planning to add a little sleeve to this. If you've been on my channel before you know I'm not a big fan of wearing sleeveless dresses. So because this is a complete arm size I can go ahead and add Add a sleeve right into the arm side. So the fabric that I found for this is from Joann's and it was on sale too which was really great. In fact I think I got it for like 40% off of the sale price. I don't know I got it for something really cheap but it was marked at $8 a yard and it's strawberries. It's obviously not an identical match to Mary Ellen's because hers has pink and hers has a slightly more of a mm, like blue green for the stems whereas this is pretty solid green. However I did find a double fold bias tape that also matches this green so I'm just gonna go with this color scheme and I'll be slightly off of hers but I do plan to do all of those bias tape finishings that she has all over this dress which really really makes everything pop. I do not know however if I got enough fabric to be able to do the little matching bloomers so we'll see if I get there. I am also planning to increase the length on this just a little bit since I am not a child in the 1950s so mine is going to hit a little below the knee where I tend to like all of my hemlines. But I'm really excited to dive into this. So let's talk about pattern. There is actually a pattern that exists for a dress that's really similar to this. It is Simplicity 8085 and it looks like this. However, I do not own this pattern and Simplicity patterns are not currently on sale and I can't bring myself to spend like $13.50 or more on a pattern that is a Simplicity pattern, especially since it's not actually 
exactly what I want. It does have a really, really similar look to the front and it starts to have a similar look to the back. However, it does not do the whole like cross completely over the sides and come around and come through the slit and wrap into the front look like Mary Ellen's dress. So there would still have to be things that I'd have to figure out on my own. And honestly, those are the more difficult things to figure out. Anyway, the rest of this dress is circular shaped skirt and darted bodice. So I'm gonna make it up myself. So this will probably be a couple of weeks long of a project because I'll be patterning it myself and because it's already Wednesday. So I'm gonna dive right in and start trying to figure out this bodice pattern, probably do a mock-up, see how that goes, and then we can start assembling the entire dress. All right, so let's talk about some of the patterning here. As you can see, this skirt is approximately a full circle. I think it's just being prevented from like connecting back here because of the bodice being attached. I think it's just kind of preventing it from going quite flat, possibly also because of some of the binding on there. But otherwise, it is basically a full circle. And you can see that on Mary Ellen's, the pockets actually are like huge and go all the way to the hem, taking up more than half of the length of the skirt. Now I am increasing the length of my skirt as a whole and I'm not a doll so I don't know that my pockets are going to be that huge because if I put something in the pocket and it went all the way to the hem of the skirt I can never get it out because I can't reach down there so we might have to do a change on that. But looking at the bodice now hers is literally just a flat piece of fabric in the front. I'm human and an adult so mine is actually going to be a darted bodice. This is the bodice that I used for my Dumbo dress which I think was last year that I made it but it's made out of simplicity whatever that pattern number is that probably equates to something that's more in line with their regular numbering system but as you can see it is just a darted bodice I am however going to be changing the neckline because this neckline is just kind of large and round and open it's almost a boat neck but it's like a little bit more deep round than that you can see like that so I will be changing that somehow as opposed to this squared off sweetheart I don't know if that will mean actually raising this a little bit and rounding it out we'll kind of have to see as I try this on but the back of this is a completely different story because we have these pieces that like yes it's kind of half of a back of a dress like here's the side seam this is approximately center back right here we've got the strap and it v's in the back as it crosses over but it does cross over like it actually goes a lot further than the center back so i mean i have the back piece from the dumbo pattern and i think that i can start with that as a base but then this is going to have to v down this way and like curve out that way large enough that it can wrap around the body now this does have a dart in it you're looking at the wrong side right there but there is i think you can see the faint outline of that dart so there is a dart right there and most likely because again i'm a human adult i will also need to have a dart in there because i think otherwise it just won't quite work so yeah i'm going to start with this but i'm going to go ahead and just kind of guess at that pattern based on some measurements and make that line and make my own back Obviously, I'm going to have to like make up the entire thing as a pattern because of the funky wrap situation. And then over here on the side, we're going to have to figure out how big this slit is so that the tab from this side can come through and come out of this slit and then around to where it buttons in the front. So lots to figure out, but let's go ahead and just give a guess, give a try at that back. So one of the things that's important to figure out here is the scale of the tab versus the button. So I couldn't find any green buttons when I was in Joann's before, but in my button stash I have three of these really, really large peach buttons. So my plan is actually just to paint these green and hope that the paint doesn't scratch out. I have painted buttons before and sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's kind of not. But right here, this is where I'm patterning the tab. I do need to make it a lot more rounded for sure. But I wanted to make sure that with the tab, there's enough room for bias binding, button, more bias binding all the way around, bias binding. So like the tab has to be decently wide down here because we have to have 
bias binding separating from the button on both sides. So it's really good that I have this large scale button. I did not do the math to scale up this button to this button for like her size to my size, which is something I would often do, but I'm going with what I have. So this button I thought looked really cute, like I kind of held it up to me. And so yeah, we're probably going to position that about right there and then draw this tab rounded like that so this part is going to start pretty wide right here and it's going to go up here another thing i noticed right here just as i'm getting to this is that okay so we've got our pattern that we're using from before so that's laid out right there folded in the seam because we don't have a seam allowance we don't have a center back seam at all and then the tab starts so this right here is the side of my waist however when we look at this this does not actually go all the way to the side. You can see there's a little bit there. So I did do the math to scale up what that gap would be, and it wound up being about 2.65, which is what this is. So I brought that back, and from there, we can see that this gets cut away. So you see how it's down, and then it very quickly scoops up away from the seam allowance so that this doesn't get caught in the seam allowance, and we can just bind that. So that's what's going on here. I am going to round this out as well, but I was just doing a marker right there for now. So it'll probably cut in maybe a tiny bit more and then round out like the one on her dress and then it's going to come up here I wasn't sure whether to curve this up because I do kind of feel like hers curves up just slightly so I brought it up a tiny bit you can see this is the flat this is like the quarter inch up by here and I'm going to curve round that out even more but that's going to go there and then this is going to come around here and then it's going to scoop up like that. I haven't figured out where the V should cross right here. This is all my math. I haven't figured out where the V should cross, but it's going to V up like that. Uh, probably about there-ish is my guess, which is handy because this is where my pattern curves in because that's kind of where my back curves in a little bit. I have a very narrow upper back. And so if it stops there, then I don't have to worry about that. So it'll V there and then it'll go up to the strap, which I did narrow as well. So you can see that is how much narrower these straps are to curve out for that sort of boat neck, large curved neckline look. And that will be the general shape of the back. So I think that this is going to be our pattern mock-up right here. I'm gonna cut out two of these really, really weird shaped pieces and we'll put everything together, leaving that gap in the side seam and we'll see how this all fits. So here is the mock-up. As you can see, it is not very far off, but there are definitely some things that need adjusting. The number one most obvious of which is the darts. I don't know what's going on with this dart situation here, but it is not good. So yeah, the darts really need to be fixed because I've got like, I don't even know. It Yeah, it's, it's not good. Uh, the other thing that I'm trying to figure out, and it's hard because of course it is the back, is that I feel like where it's crossing over, I like the depth of it, like I think it's a good V, but it feels baggy, like it feels loose, and yet at the same time somehow the tabs in the front, like they're not quite getting all the way where I think I wanted them. I honestly think I wanted them to be more like here, so I think I just need them to be a little longer but I'm just not sure why it's feeling loose. And I noticed that the looseness goes away if I kind of pull down, but of course then it becomes too long. So I don't know if it's maybe just that I need to um, get rid of a little length. I also feel like the front, at first, at least right when I put it on, it was running quite short. And then I tried to adjust the uh, seams in the shoulders to the right place. And I do feel like that's helping, but it's actually making it way too long in the center. So there's definitely part in the center that has to be cut off. And I don't know if that's really helping the back. I think the back is still running long as well, at least in the center. So I'm gonna have to even that out, but I think the neckline is okay. Like hers is definitely higher up the neck, more like this and then a little more boat neck. But I have such narrow shoulders that boat neck just kind of doesn't work for me if I don't want my straps to show at all. Like right now, 
I'm honestly at, well, no, I guess I'm not taking seam allowance out of this because it's just bound. So I guess I'm not at risk of like losing more width and therefore having my straps show. Honestly, I think I like the shoulders where they are. And I think I like the neckline where it is too. I don't think I want to bring it up anymore because this is supposed to be summery. And I feel like any farther up and I'm going to lose that kind of summery feeling. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave that as is and just cut off excess here, cut off excess length in the back, fix darts and extend these tabs out further so that the ends of the tabs can be more like here. And so the buttons wind up sitting kind of where these darts are. So I was really tempted to just go ahead and cut this out in my actual strawberry fabric, but I noticed one thing when I went to go like look at this, because remember it was stretching out like this way is what it felt like, like it felt too loose. And I noticed that on this pattern, which I did go buy, but I don't plan to actually keep because I don't like to keep patterns for full price. Uh, so I'm not cutting or anything. I just opened it and looked at the diagram. But yeah, the straight of grain is actually this part right here. So the piece is basically cut on the bias, which is why this then doesn't stretch out. So I think I need to try a mock-up point two and redo the backs or at least one of the backs and do it so that the diagonal part in the back is on the straight of grain and just see if that makes a difference fit wise. I mean, of course, doing that is going to make this bias, which is an interesting concept because then our tab is going to be bias as well. And of course, I don't know with Mary Ellen's, I mean, hers is such a small scale anyway. Hers is not bias. I'm just looking at it right now. And this, or rather, this part is bias because the piece is not cut on the bias. So the straight of grain is going up and down just like normal. So I don't know. I think it's worth trying this to see how this reacts and then go from there I mean it's not a big deal because this is just sheets so it's not like I'm wasting fabric oh while I'm over here one other thing I wanted to show you are my buttons they look really dark in this lighting but they are actually the same color as the bias tape they just don't look it in this lighting for some reason <laughs> they're reading like almost black that's really really weird they're green anyway I painted these with acrylic paint green acrylic paint and then I went over them with Mod Podge to try and get that glossy look and hopefully make it so they can't be like easily scratched off or anything like that. So I think these will work as long as they don't wind up reading black which is what they're still doing and if they do I guess I will have to do some repainting or something but yeah it's weird. In my eyes they look green but in the camera they definitely look black. So I'm not sure if it is now because the bottom hem across is on the bias as opposed to the top, but the top feels good. Like it doesn't feel droopy or anything like that where it's crossing, but this is now too large around. So I think I'm going to have to find the happy medium but with it being too large around, what that does mean is that I could just cut this out of the strawberry fabric and I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna line the strawberry fabric or not, but I could cut it out of, you know, the strawberry and potentially the lining and sew it all together and then like cut it down from there before I put the binding on, depending on if it is going to like stretch out. Now I don't know if by putting the skirt on, if that would prevent any of the stretching out or not. I mean, we're talking about a circle cut anyway. So like parts of that, depending on where it's going to be, parts of that will also wind up being on the bias because it's a circle. So you get all of the grains when you're talking about a circle. Also, parts of the tabs don't have any skirt attached to them at all. Because when we look at this right here you can see that right where the little scoop up bit is so like in the back there that is where the skirt stops being attached and so the skirt should wind up now the skirt's gonna wind up having to be significantly more than my waist measurement because of this overlap right here so there's like the entire back of the skirt overlaps itself so it is more than just like a circle skirt standard like with a fitted waist so I have to figure that out oh my god what had just happened oh I came unpinned 
oh, that's weird. Like all of a sudden it became really loose because the one little pin that was holding this in place came undone. That was a weird sensation really. But otherwise we're a lot closer. The bust darts are closer. They're still not right because they are just too wide for my bust. So I need to bring the bust darts in further yeah, I mean, I have them out here. I think they just need to point to kind of there, but they're not so pointy as they were before. They're still a little pointy, but they're not so pointy. So we're a lot closer. And yes, I know that the 50s boob shape is pointy, but I don't do that. So, you know, there's that. So I think we're at a place though, where I can go ahead and cut this out. Uh, that said, although the back pieces are quite large, Obviously the skirt pieces are the largest pieces here. I tend to like to cut the largest pieces first. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut skirt pieces and bodice pieces, which means of course I have to figure out the math for how much overlap I need for how much larger than my waist this winds up being. But again, it is a circle. And I'm going to do the added complication no, wait, I don't need to put pockets in the side seam. So I don't have to do the added complication of trying to figure out where the side seams go because I get patch pockets in front. Something that I noticed, by the way, about the pattern, the simplicity pattern, is that one of the versions here, which is this like little shortened dress version, it has patch pockets as well, but they sit quite high up on the hips and obviously aren't as deep. This is a much more functional pocket because frankly, you never want your pockets to go down further than you can reach or else they don't become particularly functional because you can't reach the bottom. So I will probably wind up doing my pockets like this, though what I might do is pockets that are like faux pockets like basically I might make my bias tape go all the way down to the bottom but the pocket itself will be like sewn off right here so I might wind up needing pretty giant pieces to be able to get that look going on there because I think I would have to do like a separate or a second piece of fabric that is this entire area which is obviously a lot more huge on a human so yeah and then i would just do one little hiding line of stitching somewhere in there to prevent it from prevent things in my pockets from going all the way to the hem of my dress which wouldn't make any sense so yeah because i really like that look so i've got some more to figure out but i think the bodice is pretty much where we need it to be and anything else can get figured out in the final and I'm hoping maybe there will even be a chance that I'll have enough fabric left to do the little bloomers. We'll see. That will be a next week thing anyhow. But yeah, let's go ahead and take all of this strawberry fabric and figure out the skirt. So quick update, I have just finished serging the waist and sides of the skirt pieces as well as flatlining the bodice pieces. So I flatlined the bodice with cotton sateen. I did debate about, oh, we're getting weird light reflections from the setting sun. I did debate about doing these pieces on the opposite grain than what the strawberries are, but I wasn't sure if that would like pull weirdly or if it would prevent any pulling. So I went ahead and just kept them on the same grain. So now we get to start assembling everything. Darts in the bodices, which I'm probably going to have to tweak those front darts at least a little bit. I did kind of look at where they probably need to be repositioned to to move them in a little bit, but I have a feeling I'll need to tweak those further once I put them on. But yeah, darts in the bodices, put the bodice pieces together and put the two skirt pieces together and then attach the skirt to the bodice. So I figured I'd better do a little bit of a try on before I attached the skirt. So this is what the bodice is looking like right now. There's still definitely something going on with the darts and I'm honestly not sure how to fix them. I already have actually tweaked them a little bit because it just felt like these ones here were going maybe too far, which was still creating a little bit of pointy, but now it's too baggy because I took that out. Honestly, I just feel like I'm a princess seam girl. Like apparently my body is made for princess seams and not darts because I often have this problem with darted bodices and I never have this problem with princess seams. And I know that if I were to join the two together, the problem would go away, but they didn't really do that so much in the fifties. They were more into darts because they had pointy boobs. 
So maybe that is my problem, is I really ought to be wearing this with a 1950s sweater bra, which I just think looks and feels silly. So there you go. Anyway, I think that despite the wonky darts, I am in a point where I can go ahead and attach the skirts to this now because I know that that is also going to make things feel a little different on here. So yeah, my plan is to go ahead, attach the skirts right now, and then probably that's all I'm going to wind up getting to this week because my mom actually flies in from California tomorrow and she is going to spend the next several days with me here. So that was why I wanted to do like pretty big effort with this week, you know, getting everything as far as I can for now done. And then next week is going to be kind of like the embellishments of things like adding on the pockets, adding on all of that binding everywhere. And ideally my Dora's meowing at me. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Here we go. Here's some little cat for you. I feel like you haven't seen very much Dora lately. So ideally I would also like to do sleeves. Now I, excuse me, ma'am. I know that the original doesn't have sleeves, but I generally don't like showing my arms. And part of that is just because they're large. And then the other part is the weird like discoloration that I have here that I just don't like. I think it's keratosis pilaris, but honestly, I'm not really sure. Do not put your face on a hot iron. Okay, we are going to hold this cat because she's not being smart. You're not being smart. Anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put the skirt on and stop blabbering and I'm going to make sure that this little lady gets some attention and then I will show you what it looks like all together and that will probably be the end of this week's video. See bye! Oh, what you get? Okay, so this is really, really cute. I was hoping that putting the skirt on would kind of fix the dart issue. It has not. So I'm going to have to figure out with like this dart right here how to make that better. But like, look at this little dress. It's so cute. And it's going to be even cuter once I have all of the green trim on it. But yeah, I mean, the skirt, oh, I think it's kind of folded back right now, but the skirt goes to there so that's where that overlap is there on the outside and yeah it looks so cute it kind of just looks like polka dots the one thing that I'm not totally in love with is the fact that the seam of the skirt wound up being the center front and it just seems like too many strawberries next to each other and very much in a line because it is like the selvage of the fabric but I think that because the skirt is full enough that's not super super obvious but yeah it's gonna be very fun to wear and I guess I will have to decide between this week and next about the sleeves or not. So this is where I am going to leave it off for this week's video and maybe I'll get my mom's opinion on adding the sleeves or not but I think that even without all of the green trim it is looking quite a bit like Mary Ellen's. Obviously my strawberries are a little bit more dense looking because they're all red as opposed to red and pink but I think once I've added the green trim it's going to look very very much like this and figured out you know the big giant pocket situation and everything but yeah I'm really liking it so far. I am excited for this to be like another fun summer dress that I'll get a lot of use out of just in general as well. I had kind of hoped that like the American Girl cosplays I've done in the past Felicity notwithstanding, uh, would kind of count as summer dresses, but I've just generally found that they're like too high of a neckline, just a little too much to be like light summer dress. So I think that this one, especially with sleeves, because I do feel more comfortable with sleeves, would wind up being something that I'll wear probably pretty often, since I do wear a lot of my more like vintage inspired dresses very often in my wardrobe. But yeah, that's going to be it for this week. Hopefully you're enjoying this project so far. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe.
subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support my channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube memberships right here on YouTube below the video. I'd also like to take this time to give a super humongous thank you to all of my absolutely wonderful patrons. Seriously, I could not do it without you guys. I got a new patron between filming and editing this, so it's prompted a little reshoot of this section. So again, my absolutely fabulous romantic Victorian and Edwardian level tier patrons who are Mirage, Jean, Janelle, Audra, Emily, Kim, Maria, Sarah, Tiffany, Ricky, Liz, Kimberly, Nurse Anita, Chaos Chan, and my new patron, Linda. Thank you all absolutely so, so much. Now back to previous Rebecca. Thank you all so, so much. Seriously, you mean so much to me. And thank you all for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!